What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at lead code problem number 1350, students with invalid departments. This one is marked as easy and has often been asked by Amazon. So let's get into it. Let's take a look at what we have here. We have a table called departments which contains the ID and name of a department of a university. And we have a table called students containing an ID and name of these students. And then also a department ID which refers to the ID in departments. Our task is to write an SQL query to find the ID and the name of all students who are enrolled in departments that no longer exist. We can return that result in any order and it should look something like this. We have John, Diana, Jasmine and Steve as students in the students table, but they don't have a department that exists in the department table. So let's get into coding that up. Actually this exact type of question comes up a lot on lead code and also in interviews, that's why it comes up a lot on lead code. So pay special attention to this one since it's a very common type of question. As in asking which student or which element in the student table exists in student but doesn't exist in departments. In this case, trying to look at department ID, not student ID, but it's pretty much the same thing. So let's think about how we can achieve that solution. Once again, our task is to find the ID and the name, that's what we should output, of all students who are enrolled in departments that no longer exist. So we want to output ID and name of the students table, which is in here, totally fine. And they are enrolled in departments that no longer exist. We also have department ID in students, so our job is to check whether that department ID also shows up in that department table. It's called ID there but it's going to be the same ID. And there's two possible ways of doing this, or two I want to show, and let's just start with the first one. So as I said, we want to select name and ID of the student. So we're going to select from students. And then we want to make sure that this department ID is not in the departments table. And judging from that sentence I just mentioned, or just spoke out loud, I can pretty much rewrite that entire sentence. So these students' department ID should not show up in the departments table. So I'm gonna say where department ID is not in the departments table. So this is something you can do in MySQL. There are alternatives in other dialects, but this one reads really well. That's why I like to use MySQL. Anyway, so we want to check whether that department ID is in the departments table. So we need to just select the ID from departments. It's going to give us a list of department IDs. And we're going to check whether our department ID of that student is in that list. And if it is not in that list, we're going to add that student to our output. And that's going to be a result table. Let's just run that to see if it works. And it's already accepted. If I submit that, it should be accepted as well. That was pretty short. I hope you could follow. Basically, we just use that where filter to check whether that department ID is in the departments table. And in order to make that comparison, we need to have a little subquery where we just select ID from departments. If we just were to write where department ID not in departments, then we wouldn't know which column to compare to. It makes sense for us that department ID is ID in departments, but SQL doesn't know that. It could be, it could have an entirely different name. And that's why we need to say select ID from departments. Anyways, another way of doing this, which is also something you should really know, is using a left or right join. Basically, whenever you want to check whether something is in one table, but not in the other one, then you want to look at a left or right join. Left and right joins are just the opposite way of doing the same thing. Left join meaning everything in the left table will be included in our output, and then all the matches from the right table will also show up. If there are no matches, it's gonna get us null values, and that's what we're gonna check for here. 
Similarly, if you use a right join, it's just going to be the other way around and everything in the right table will be there and matches from the left table. Let's just do an example here. So we're selecting from students, joining departments on ID. So students dot department ID should be departments.id. That's what we're going to join on. And this is a regular join, so it's just going to give us all columns from both tables for, for these kind of departments that still exist. But we don't want that. We want students who are enrolled in departments that no longer exist. So we want to either left or right join. Let's take a moment to think about this one. Yeah, let's do a left join here. So we're saying we want to include all students. And then if they have a match in departments, they're going to have a regular kind of join, having all columns. And if that's not the case, we're going to have null for departments, all of the values, columns in departments. Mm, let's just select star to visualize that and run that. So the output is going to be not accepted, but we can see that if there's electrical engineering or computer engineering, we have no null values. And for Jasmine, for example, that is in department 77, we have null values for the department, since there's no department with ID 77. We want to keep these types of students, which have null values in here, so we can just filter for where these fields are null. So let's say we want to use something in departments. Let's take ID, where department ID or departments.id is null. So we need to use is null here since we can't compare to null using equal signs since null is a missing value. So we need to use that specific keyword here. And we also need to use department.id since that is the department ID that is in departments. If we, were used, if we were to use that from students, it would always be there and it wouldn't work since that's in the left table, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. All right. Yeah, it would be this 77 in this example, but we're looking for, the, we're trying to check one of these values that are not. Okay, that works. Hopefully let's run that. Um, I can select star, I need to change it back to name and ID, I think. Actually ID and name. And it should be the student's name, not the department's name. If we run that, ID is also ambiguous. So it should be students.id. All right, that is it. That's accepted. And if we submit that, it's going to be accepted as well. And that's it for this question. Obviously, left join is something you should know in and out. So make sure to give this one a thorough look and you're going to come up against a lot of these problems. Left joins, very popular in interviews, so I really recommend you to get to know it as, as, as well as you can. Anyways, that's been it for this question. Hope you enjoyed it. I have a playlist on YouTube on each lead code difficulty, so if you want to see more, check these out for easy, medium and hard questions. And I also set up a Fiverr page if you want to practice SQL coding interviews with me specifically. We're going to do a mock interview or look over your resume together. If you're interested, check out the links in the description. Apart from that, the channel is always going to be there and be free. So see you there. Until next time, bye.